I wouldn't be the girl I am, the woman, I, the married woman I am now without my previous self. And I used to be like, oh, him, he's dead. Yeah. He died. Yeah. But like, no, 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 no. it's and like an evolution. So. And I love that it's an evolution. Hello all, and welcome to Marsha, 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 the podcast. I'm your host, Marsha Molinari. And you are here listening to the podcast that brings true and heartfelt human connection. I believe if you don't know about it, you can't care about it. And that's why we're here today. Okay, welcome to Marsha, 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 the podcast. And I want to introduce one of my best friends, my neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the beautiful YouTube star, transgender activist, author, television personality, actress, model, LGBTQ plus icon. She has nearly 8 million followers across her social media platform and almost half a billion views on her YouTube channel. That is wild. Welcome, Gigi Gorgeous Getty. I'm freaking out. <laughs> so today I wanted to talk about how we met and our journey into transitioning into these women that we are today. We were talking about this the other night. We were. I yeah. feel like it kind of always comes back to this. Yeah. Um, well, was it here, actually? Mm -hmm. We met at Bootsy Bella's where we are um, shooting our podcast. And Which is also so crazy. Can we take a second? Yeah. Like this club is literally where I got my roots in LA because of you. Yeah. Like fully you were like, yeah, come on. A mutual friend uh, brought us together. And the amount of memories I have in this building is so insane. Like with you, just I mean, because you were like, come on in. Like our looks have changed. We've changed as people. Like, yes. All together. Like this is wild to me. Like. I'm so excited to be here, and I really feel like this is the only place it needed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's insane. Looking around, I'm like, that table I remember. Well, we've renovated the, the place Yeah, since. we've renovated. But I'm like, on that and side, we've renovated. this happened. I know, hello. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I feel like it's a new body. Yeah, for I sure. I remember our first night together, though. I was wearing this um, Versace print Forever 21 crop top and legging set. Do you remember yes. this? Yes. I do remember. You loved that crop top. I couldn't, you couldn't take it off me. No. No boobs, uh, just freshly trans, and I was just feeling myself. And like you, like you were always like so chic and like always, all these designers. And I, I feel was, like- I was heavily into suits then. Yes. Oh, always a suit. Yeah. But you never looked suit. at me differently. Like I always remember just being like, hey, Marsha. And then you'd be like, oh, hey, what's up? I feel like because I like rocked it or something. You but totally always rocked it. You had the confidence, which I first admired, was like, wow, look, she's doing it. And she's coming in hot. Hot. Coming in and hot. And you were coming in hot. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, and, and to be honest, I, ne I never looked at you differently in a, in a sense that even from here to now, you know, and things have changed. Mm -hmm. Um. And to me, it's just, I, maybe it's our soul connection. There was never any kind of real difference that happened for me other than that you've always been you Aww, to me, Marcia. for sure. I, I feel the same way. I do. I feel like when you meet somebody, it's like, like, like I was saying, all the designers and all the intimidation, it was like, that was really like a lot for me because I was coming from Toronto. But at the same time, I had such a big personality that I felt like, big personalities attract other big personalities. Yeah, no, totally. And like, we just like saw each other and like, just to see how much we've grown. Like, how long has it been? Probably like 10 years, right? I think it's been 10 years, 11 years? A decade, bitch. A decade, A bitch. decade. Wow, that is so long ago. Well, that brings me to like, okay, because I'm dealing with, I'm newly transgender woman. Hey, 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 welcome to the club, Marcia. best club ever. It really, it really is, you know, when you really, can come to terms with like, oh wow, I can finally be myself, or this is what it is, or, and to me, I don't think it's like shocking or anything in my head that I'm transitioning. Mm -hmm. Because if you really look back, it was always there. Totally. You know, mm -hmm. uh, from a super young age, I remember like five years old, I was hiding my mom's dresses and high heels under the sink. Ditto. And hiding, I mean, I, for me in, in my household, it was not allowed at all. Mm -hmm. So I would hide, wait, and sometimes I would leave it there and then come back and get it and put it away where it rightfully belonged. Um, Just in my in closet. Case. No, I'm yeah, kidding. Right. <laughs> on my body. <laughs> on my body. Uh, 
But I used to also do things like take like a dress shirt, you know, because when we're kids, like those things are like huge. Mm -hmm. So like the collar would fit around my waist. Oh, that. girl, girl that come on, Marilyn. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and so I just remember always being, always having this woman energy mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Like I didn't really understand why I couldn't wear dresses. Mm -hmm. um, what was that memory for you like? Like childhood and very very similar i feel like kids are just often so themselves yeah and like now that like a lot of our friends well not a lot but like a handful of our friends have yeah. kids now yeah they're now seeing oh my god like my kid is now leaning towards the feminine like i have this acting coach for example she has this kid and um just for sake of like um privacy i won't name name the child but she was like oh yeah like he's now wanting to like lean towards dresses and like fully opened the door this one time i went over in like a frozen set and i was like that is so beautiful like frozen disney yeah pixar no, whatever yeah, it is totally. yeah with like the princesses on <laughs> just it just a frozen child yeah just frozen yeah <laughs> on so the, the child was dead frozen yeah. and i said wow what a gender expression <laughs> yeah you really let him <laughs> well just really really cold <laughs> yeah now that's love. No, I I was Keep like them as they are. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> Frozen in time. I mean, hello, that waste. <laughs> yeah. But I was gagged. I was like, wow, like this is so beautiful that like you know I get to see that like parents are nurturing that because my parents growing up they did it was it was wrong, but I wasn't like scolded necessarily for right. it. I would just be told to correct it like before. Right. Before school, I remember I would paint my nails and my mom would be like, what did you do? We need to take this off before you have to go. Yeah. You know, but like not knowing like, I wanted to go like, like that. Yeah. Like I was like, I got ready, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, but yeah, I feel like some people just aren't that lucky. But for me, it was just always there. There was always this like women, woman instinct within me. And it, it was just through like society and stuff that I, I learned to kind of suppress that. And then yeah. I knew it was wrong to be that way, you know, being called like, fag on the on the schoolyard and on the bus that I rode every day it was just like oh this isn't okay this isn't yeah. accepted I don't want to be that because it sounds bad and I didn't even know what that word meant me I know neither it, it was, there was also like it was like gay lord or something like that they were, that would be thrown around and I never knew mm -hmm. what that meant but I know it I knew it was bad yep I always and, knew it was bad and I never wanted to be yeah, called it. I was like, no, I'm not. The pointing, what? no, yeah, no, not me. Mm -hmm. Slowly taking my mom's high heels off. Uh -huh. like, you know, like it's more thing. than fag, honey. Yeah. It's queen. It's queen. <laughs> you better recognize. Um, no, but it is that. And um, for me, you know, in my household, like I was saying, it wasn't welcomed. And so, but even having that strong urge to be this, I would risk sort of a life-threatening situation. Mm -hmm. But I never thought about it that way. I just kind of worked it out in my head and planned. And I think that's kind of the amazing thing about the way our brains work, the way our intellect works and how it protects us. And it's like, okay, well, I've got these dangerous situations. This is what I can do to go around it. Because as a kid, you don't know anything better or anything else. Totally. You know, um, there was... I figured every family was like this mm -hmm. and it was danger. And I wanted to be who I was in my private time. Mm -hmm. And so going through that was um, kind of bizarre. Uh, how was it going coming out to your parents? I know we've all seen the documentary. I mean, I have, and I know you very well, um, but just so you can tell other people that are coming out and kind of what your experience is or what maybe their experience could be. Well, for me, it was a little bit, up and down. So when I told my my dad, it all started actually when my mom passed away. I was 19 and I had already started hormones. I had already met my first trans girl. I was like, this is the road for me. This is what I'm doing with my life. But I wanted to like test the waters a little bit. And she was very sick with leukemia. So she ended up passing way too soon. And I never got to tell her that I was trans. Oh, wow. So when she passed, I went through all the stages of grief, bitch. The denial, the anger. I feel like there's like seven of them. Yeah. I went through all of them for years. Oh, but you immediately, just gave me the chills. I mean, grief is something yeah. that I just, I, I mean, everyone has to deal with, but I don't yeah. wish on anyone. because. No. It changes you. Yeah. And definitely. from the set, like maybe like the week or the month after, I was like, I'm just going to scream from the rooftops that I'm trans. Like, life is too precious. It's too, precious. too short. And like, I'm going to start living for me. 
And I think that that's like a lesson that she's, she taught me right in that minute. She was like, Gigi, you are, you in are a way, too special. A gift from something that is so tragic that you can bring this light. Now, now you've touched so many people in the world. You know, what was it? Half a million views. That's half a billion views. That's wild. You have an outreach and that wouldn't, that seed started from your mom. Mm -hmm. And that is wildly beautiful. And she was also like my biggest supporter. Yeah. She would be on her computer downstairs and would come upstairs and be like, I saw your makeup tutorial. Like, I love it. Wow. So that's what killed me. I was like, yeah. why didn't I tell her? Yeah. And that's why I'm such like an advocate for it. I'm such an advocate for living loud and proud. And like, whenever someone's like, I think I might be trans, like, I'm like, well, let's do it. Like, let's just see if you are, you know, like, let's express it. Like, yeah. you never know. Cause you could just regret this time that you have where you're like expressing it so freely. Yeah. You know, you know, I'll tell you that you were, um, kind of the front runner for me in that respect was, um, actually a year ago when we went to Mexico and you made everyone call me Marsha mm -hmm. and miss and ma'am and she, her. And when we got back, Marcus didn't sound the same. I'm mm -hmm. um, sorry. I'm getting teary because no. it, it was really that special. that like, it kind of was like, because my close friends called me Marsha mm -hmm. for, for years. Years and years and years, um, my close friends had called me Marsha. And it was kind of like both Marcus and Marsha, and, and people kind of like went with it. Mm -hmm. um, but to have a set time, I mean, we were, I think we were there for 20 days. So long. <laughs> when we we moved, were on a slight well, vacation yeah, in Mexico. When we moved to month. Mexico. <laughs> we uh, moved there, literally. And, you know, everyone started calling me Marsha, and everyone said, um, yes, ma'am, or... You know, um, yes, Miss Marsha. Yeah, Miss Marsha. Yeah, it was Miss Marsha. Um, that really changed something in me mm -hmm. then. Um, and then following that, I was like, I want to be Marsha. That, right. That's who I am. I always say, like, when the when the pronouns, like the he, she, or the, or the Mister, Mrs., Miss, whatever, isn't hitting right, like it's like hitting a nerve in you, then like there's something going on. Yeah. You know, and yeah. like especially the name, like. When I, when I personally made the change, I was like, I, when I'm saying it out loud to you, I mean it, yeah. you know, I'm not just saying like, oh, call me red book, yeah. please. I'm like, no, my name is Gigi and my pronouns are she, her, yes. like I mean it. Yeah. And that's, that's crazy that you went from like, basically like a fantasy yeah. to real life. And you were like, uh, uh, honey, yeah. this doesn't feel right. And it didn't feel right. And, but it, it didn't not feel right before because I didn't know what that was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I was never allowed to express that. So I think I suppressed it so much. And I remember being asked before um, by one of my colleagues and I said, are you transitioning? And I laughed. I, I laughed like, oh, you think I'm transitioning? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I was wearing dresses in full I'm makeup. Right. I'm Looking like, back, what are we like, talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, I'm fully wearing a dress I talking love to him. That. I was like, mm. That's funny. It was so funny that you thought that. Like, mm -hmm. And I thought it was funny. I was like, mm, people are wild. <laughs> and here I am. People are so crazy People are here. so crazy. And here I am. You know, and then other people would be like, what do you prefer? And I said, oh, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Call me. I call everyone she anyways. Mm -hmm. But now I care. Like making excuses because you don't want other people to feel weird. Yeah. That's exactly what I went through as well. But like, why are we making ourselves smaller? for other people that are allowed to be as large as they want. It are, takes a strong person. Yeah, like it, it really, it really like you have to build it up. Cause I, I know so few people that will walk in a room and be like, uh, uh, honey, Yeah, you know, that's a very rare person. I mean, last night, for example, at dinner, my friend kept saying Marcus mm -hmm. and, um, I kept saying Marsha after, and then it kept happening at right out one right after the other. Mm -hmm. And she apologized, but I was like, what is so hard? about, you know, a perfect example, I was watching this TED talk and a linguist was like giving a bunch of examples about, we used to, they're like, you can't change the the language, English language. And they're like, well, that's exactly what's happened over time. We used to say thou, you know, or, you know, like- <laughs> Romeo and Juliet Yeah, days. kind of thing. But that's what, that's how, uh, you know, America's very new in itself, you know, in its country. Um, so the way we used to talk, is way different from the way we talk now. The words we use are way different. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think I remember hearing that like the word uh, awful used to mean awesome in a way or something. However, like that's it was, so awful. But it was changed in the dictionary. Hmm. Um, and the other example was, this was the best example I took from, was that how some grandmothers, you know, your grandmother is your grandmother. Mm -hmm. Just like when someone says, well, uh, you're my son, you're my son. You know, that's all, you'll always be my son to me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, which is really hurtful, you know, in a way. And not that that's happened to me, but, you know, these are the Shit things happens. that happens. Yeah. So example, your grandmother is your grandmother. Well, your grandmother does not always want to be called grandmother. Mm -hmm. So they come up with names like Nona Gigi. or Gigi. <laughs> and you... And you do it right. for them because right. that's what they want. Uh -huh. And I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. And But it's so easy for the rest of the family to hook onto that. Mm -hmm. Her name change, for example. <laughs> Throwing grandma under the bus. <laughs> so, see what you did? No. Um, but to when, you know, when it's important for, say, us, then it's always fought back on a little mm -hmm. bit or, or a lot mm -hmm. in some cases. Um you know, my nephew has transitioned. Um, and when I went to visit him, he, my sister kept dead naming him. Okay. And calling him she. And I would, she would, my sister would, was telling a story. Who's also an angel, by the way. Like, yeah, not, and, doesn't do it maliciously. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, no, this is my sister you don't know. Oh. And I was like, Felicia? No, no, no. My sister, Sonia. Um, but, you know, for her, her upbringing was quite different. And, but she always said I would never turn away my kids and that kind of thing. She loves her kids very much. With that being said, it's taking her a while to attach to the pronouns and the name change. Mm -hmm. And she knew exactly what was going on because she was telling this story. And she's like, she, and, you know, saying her dead name and... Uh, like I, waiting to get corrected about it? No, I would just, uh, while she's telling the story, I'd go, he. Right. Travis. <laughs> he. That's everything. Like, she did not stop the story. She didn't like, oh, I'm not doing that, you know, or anything, but just continued to tell the story. Weird. In her way. Um, using the wrong pronouns and using the wrong name. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, it is. Cause you know, what's so funny that I've noticed whenever, like, I, I literally have said this before, but it's so true. Like whenever there's like a baby rolling by or whatever, you're like, Oh my God, he's so cute. And the mother will be like, Oh, it's actually a girl. And you'd be like, Oh my God, she's so cute. But like, if it's somebody like a little bit older, it's like, Oh yeah, he, Oh no, sorry. It's actually a girl. They're like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Like, whoa, easy. Yeah. You know, it's like, Relax. No, you're it's right. It's okay. I, like, you can get through that. We can get through this. And babies are babies. They're gorgeous and, like, exactly. come on. Exactly. Like, why yes. get offended? And I remember seeing and seeing a baby at, like, brunch. Uh-huh. Beautiful. In a gorgeous dress. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a dress. But this celebrity turned around when I was like, oh, my God, your daughter's so beautiful. Said, she's he. It's my son. What a weird and way I was to like, put it. But angry. Like, it's my son. Oh, really? And I was like, oh. Like, I, I'm okay, sorry. Okay, well, your son's very beautiful then in a gorgeous <laughs> dress. Love it. People can be fucking crazy. People Tear it right? up. <laughs> yeah. Just like I said, people can be crazy. People can be crazy. What happened? Was it any liquid in it? It's the club, girl. You know, things fall all the uh, time. Hello. It's why we mostly That's why wear... why we have plastic. <laughs> also why we mostly wear black in the club. Uh-huh, hello. Things get thrown on us all the I time. I knew where I was coming. Um, oh, wait. So what I was going to say is, so after that person, um, I'm standing in line. I just want to go on with, like, parents and things. Totally. I'm standing in line in, in Aspen uh, for... Oh, darling. Oh, darling. Darling, Aspen. Aspen. Um, so she, we have Bootsy Bellows and Aspen there. So go visit. Oh my God, you do. Yeah. I need to go. Yeah, definitely. We all have to go. Um, and this was a, such a great moment, actually. I, I looked down and I said, oh, I love your daughter's princess dress. Mm -hmm. And he goes, it's my son, but smiling. And I said, oh. And I was like, well, very beautiful. Still love the yeah. dress. <laughs> but a different kind of feeling and reaction from the other parent. And he said, actually, here, what's your number? And I was like, oh, what? He's like, uh -huh. I want to send you something. And then um, I, I think I remember giving him my, like, 
um, Twitter or something like that. DM me. Not my phone number, Angel. No, we just met. <laughs> and um, he sends me an article, a New York Times article, and he had written a whole article about how his son wanted to wear dresses and how, because um, he looked up to his older sister. Mm -hmm. and wanted to do what his older sister was doing and putting on all her dresses. And he said, they were getting ready for a birthday party. And he's like, you can't go like this. We're going to be around other parents. Mm -hmm. It's time for you to change. Dress up is done, basically. Yeah, kind of yep. that's exactly And he's throwing too. a fit. Like, I can't. No, mm -hmm. it's my dress. Mm -hmm. It's my way. And he thought to himself, he's like, why am I fighting a child on what they're wearing? Who mm -hmm. cares? What is it? Am I is am I scared of what other parents might it's think? It's the ego of the parent. It's the Absolutely. ego of the parent. And and he was like, actually, stay in your dress and be happy. And Who be wants happy? a crying kid like for the no. love of God. And for him, his son ended up stopped wearing dresses on his own. Um, but I thought it was super lovely that he gave him that creative space to do that. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think that that's what kids are missing, but I think they're getting a lot more than when, when we were younger. Totally. Um, because it, I didn't know a single gay person mm -hmm. um, when I was growing up. Um, and I grew up in a really religious household. And specifically speaking of, um, my pastor uncles would monitor, and I'm six years old. Mm -hmm. I'm at the bus stop and my uncle and my aunt pull up in their car, dusted everyone. It was like, <laughs> it was like dirt everywhere. And ruined my outfit, first of all, like right <laughs> in the bed, right beginning. But got out the car and made a huge scene about me rolling up my pants. Because, you know, we used to take the pants and fold them and roll them up and kind of like make them really cute. Like cuter, yeah. Yeah, but that was like the times and everyone did it and it was guys and girls did it. Mm -hmm. Well, they thought only girls did it and they... Came, like even that little they, thing, six years old. Oh God! Pulled up to make me roll down in front of everyone my pants. And you're like, oh. and one, these pants weren't cute without the roll up. <laughs> right. So I already started off with those. And so I, I remember Way being to on, level me down. Yeah. And as soon as I get to school, I put them right back. And my cousins told on me, and I got a spanking when I got home. God. And I'm like, and I could not, for the life of me, put my head around. Why these grown giant people, mm -hmm. you know, very small at six, <laughs> cared about what I was wearing so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, they it, that takes a lot of energy. I mean, they were heated about it. That's I mean, so fucking it couldn't crazy. Not there be anything else in the world to be upset about or like to think about? Mm -hmm. You know, like your job. I don't know anything, but why you cared so much about this six-year-old folding his pants over? You know. I can, you know, a lot of the time I feel like that, like just in my mind, like is just internalized homophobia. Like they have some kind For of sure. homophobic or homo homosexual tendencies. Well, they always say like you, you really, if you hate something and something, it's because you see something in yourself. Exactly. Exactly. Like, and with like, with all the gay slurs thrown at like us yeah. when we were younger, it's like those who like didn't throw that and didn't care probably were the most like, you know. They quote unquote care. straight. Yeah. They just didn't care. It's like because they knew themselves or whatever. It didn't bother them. Like yeah. what would whoever you decide to sleep with, you know, curly. Maybe you like curly hair or straight hair mm -hmm. in whoever your partner is. So why should the other things matter? Yeah, you know, to you, to anybody else. Exactly. Like, well, how is it affecting you? Yeah. Oh yeah, you Who can't I sleep, sleep at night because. Yeah. You love me. <laughs> I know that when I came out to my mom, it was very difficult. Um, you know, she's very religious. And um, I came out to her when I was 19 because I fell in love. And it was I didn't care. Mm -hmm. I didn't care what my mom thought. But I but I did because, it, you know, it was hard for me to tell her. If I didn't care, I would have just told her. Mm -hmm. And... But I, I found it very interesting her the way her what her first reaction was and the first thing she said to me was, "Why would you choose men? They'll hurt you." Okay. And maybe that comes from what she's been hurt. Totally. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. You no, know, and you're choosing this path, you know, kind of thing. But like, right. For her, was that? Um, wow. Yeah. And so it, instead of first coming from like a you're gonna burn in hell kind of thing, mm -hmm. it was. 
why would you choose men? They'll hurt you. Like it's, I'm not choosing. It's who I am. Yeah, it's who I am. And um, but I thought it was kind of sweet in her way to first be protective. Mm -hmm. Um, Later on came the well, we can never really accept him. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of thing. Um, yeah, but you know, shortly after that, I found my family. Mm -hmm. Um, so everything else is, uh, it's a plus, you know, I wouldn't change anything, how I was raised, Mm -hmm. uh, how my mom is, how any, anyone in my life, however they are, because I love who I am today. Yep. It shaped you. It shaped me. And without those hardships, I may not be the person I am today, and I couldn't imagine being any other person. Mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine being different. I couldn't imagine, you know, working in a cubicle. You know, if that's what you do, that's great. But, like, for me, if that would have changed me in any other way, I don't know how I would have <coughs> lived as anybody else mm-hmm. because I don't see it. And I'm so grateful that I have the awareness and the strength from those hardships to now be Marsha. And even though... I don't know. I guess it's never late in the game. There's no, it's no one time for anyone, right? Absolutely not. It's when no. you figure it out because I was that person back then. Um, I was Marcus and I was that, that was part of my journey to get here. Mm-hmm. And if I hadn't been that Marcus, I wouldn't be this Marsha. Mm-hmm. And um, way to bring it back around, girlfriend. No, I love <laughs> no, that. It's no. so true. Like when I, um, I, I think to speak to your point a little bit, like I think parents a lot of the time when they, when they have maybe a negative reaction, it's not because they necessarily don't want you to be that. They're just scared for you. Yeah. Like when I told my mom when I was 15, I was like, I am gay. This is who I am. I remember my mom holding her as she cried. But she explained to me literally the very next day, she was like, I'm just so scared for you. Like, yeah. gay men have it so much harder. Yeah. Like, I just don't want that for you. Like, I'm just, I'm so sorry. And I now, I totally understand that. For sure. I feel like we had that, like, in common, like, all along. Yeah. And she came around and all that. But I feel like our old selves, our pre transition selves, our dead names, if you will. Yeah. Like, we are so... It's been beaten into us time and time again. Like my career is literally based off of my journey. Yeah. And you've lived as your previous gender and name for so long that it's like, we thank them for bringing us here. For sure. Like I wouldn't be the girl I am, the woman, I, the married woman I am now without my previous self. And I used to be like, oh, him, he's dead. Yeah. He died. But yeah. like, no, 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 no. it's and like an evolution. So. And I love that it's an evolution. Like yeah. I never want him to die because I feel like he still like lives inside of me. Yeah. He's just not I don't want to like, shy blossomed. away from it or be like, oh, I don't want to see that photo of me in a suit. Exactly. But for a long time, that, that can be triggering. I just got the chills. People can really stray yeah. away. I know so many trans girls and so many trans guys, they're like, stop playing that video. Don't look at those photos. Yeah. Because they're triggered by it. But if you, you know, ease in a lot of the time, it'll actually make you stronger and happier. I think so. I think when you accept all of yourself is when you can be, you know, a light for anyone else. Our people are drawn to it. They're like your confidence. And exactly. And all, these, all of those things. And those come with not hiding any part of yourself, mm-hmm. you know, in a sense. Although people are really good at hiding. So, I mean, I we're, mean, we're taught to. Especially, well, we've been online yeah. for so long. Like, literally, we posted ourselves, like, every single day for years. <laughs> yeah. So, a bitch is going to find us. Yeah, there's no getting away uh-uh. from it. And they're going to find Marcus. So, if you're trying to live stealth, it's not going to work. Yeah. So, better just to, like, you know, ease into the monster that it is. Because it even if it takes a lot of time, it's just you, you literally end up so much happier on the other side. Now, let me ask you this, because I was just thinking about this. Um... You're famous, and people know you. you it's are. like I'm looking in a mirror. <laughs> I mean, so are you. <laughs> no, but it, it's like, you know, I can't help but think for myself that some people in my past life, you know, my mom, for example, and I know she's changed. She has changed. She's made steps. But in the beginning, I thought, um, are you more accepting of me because I'm successful? Ooh, you know, love are, that topic. And it, it was, I, there was a feeling of that. Yep. Like, yeah, I'm now, I don't know um, if you could say like the golden child in my family. Okay. But I'm, 
would I be if I'm not in a position that I'm in? I don't, and I really don't feel that I would be. Right. You know, and, and that really kind of sucks because it doesn't matter what anybody does. You know, everyone wants to be accepted and everyone wants to be, you know, recognized for who they are. And so if I'm only recognized because you think I'm successful, that doesn't come from a genuine place. Yep. And um, do you did you find that when you started becoming more known, especially on YouTube, I mean, when I first met you, I was like, who is she? Because right. I, I hadn't known right. who you were. That was a mutual friend that brought yeah, me we around. Yeah, we were just friends. Yes. But where that came from was... When we walked outside, when I came to Toronto to visit you, you had fans waiting for you. Oh, yeah. At a venue. You and Allison. Yeah. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, we were there for TIFF. And um, I remember the gag. I remember the because, gag. Because even you were like, wait, what are they doing here? Like, and then I ran across yeah, the street, you ran took across, some photos, and, and you were amazing ran right with back them. to the table. But, it, but how they found you, like, it was wild to me. I was like, I'm, I remember being in the restaurant and being like, Looking outside and like, who is she? <laughs> <laughs> who, After who is she? hanging out for so long. Yeah. Oh my God, that's everything. I was like, wait, she's got a gaggle of fans outside. <laughs> a gaggle. Love I love my know. Toronto bitches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you feel that people changed around you as you got more popular? I do. And you know what? I think it's, it's not necessarily, I mean, I completely agree with what you said. Like if you weren't the... Um, the successful, amazing, happy individual that you are now, yeah. would they still be so accepting? Yeah. You know, but I think that success equals freedom in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like w once I, you know, had shared it, my, my tea, I had come out, I've come out many times, but the first time once I had told my mom and my dad, I was like, this is my journey. Like, this is who I am. My mom was so upset. She's like, oh my God, like life is going to be so hard. Like, you know, like how is, you know, he back then going to navigate. And once I started earning my, my own coin, traveling on my own coin and just like really doing me, I think that other family members started seeing that and they were like, oh wow, like, yeah. you know, killing it. Yeah. And I think it's, it's that, you know, kind of like chin up attitude, like, I got this. I always had this, Yeah. you know, but I think the end goal, like w when your parents can start, and I've seen it with so many of my trans friends, when your parents can start bragging about you because they're friends yeah. and friends of friends start yeah. seeing and who know who you are, then it's like, it's so sweet. Cause it's like, Oh, I'm accepted, it is sweet, but is actually. it genuine? I yeah. get that feeling too. Yeah. But I think as long as like the kid is happy where I would think if you see them in the limelight, limelight and you yeah. see them like doing a ton of projects and stuff, you would assume they're happy. But a lot, a lot of the time, that's not how it is. Yeah, I mean, if I worked at Taco Bell, but I was pursuing my passion as a writer, mm -hmm. would that, and probably like, let's just say I was a brilliant writer, but you know, with someone that is doing something that makes them happy. Mm -hmm. And that's why they want to take a job at Taco Bell because that supports them. Mm -hmm. Or, exactly. you know, it's it, the exactly the, the perfect position for them to be at. And, you know, which is why I go and say that it doesn't, it shouldn't matter um, what you do uh, and how people perceive you. But in so this society, unfortunately it does. And it's not the best feeling. Mm -hmm. um, but I wonder if I was in that position working at Taco Bell, but pursuing my dreams and totally happy, mm -hmm. would people be happy for me as much as they are happy for me now? You know, it's and, a great question. Yeah. It really is. And I feel like you would just th stand the test of time and just see. It is that. Because and, you can only know if someone sticks by you for years to come and once the star fades or the happy, I don't know what it is, you know, and in, in this industry, it's all about like who's hot right now and like yeah. that stuff and like, my parent, my my parent, and my stepmom in Toronto don't necessarily see that. You know, they've they've gotten a little taste of that, so yeah. I know they know. Oh, she's good. Yeah. But growing up, I I don't know what I what they would have thought without that. I really don't. Yeah. I think it gave me a lot of freedom and a lot of space. Now, there's also just came to mind. Do you think that where you are now? I'll, I'll ask this again. Uh, did you think you're always destined for stardom? Because I will tell you that I think you were, and I think that it was always in you. Um, recently, when we decided that uh, you were going to be the first guest, 
I started looking back at old YouTube videos. Oh my God, how embarrassing. No, so good. I mean, I watched, <laughs> I watched a ton actually. Jesus. But I, I, what I saw was I was like, she's always been a creative person. She was always trying to create things, you know, with the YouTube channel, with your um, after school TV show. Uh huh. The, the, yeah, the like, Avenue. Oh my God, the, the Avenue. Campus. It was, I was into it. Oh, bitch. I, I watched it drunk with friends that <laughs> haven't seen it, it so many times. I was like, and what they're else? like, this is you? Yeah. I'm like, yes, bitch. Yeah. Like 10 years ago. But you're giving actress. Oh, still am. Yeah, still am. <laughs> but no, I loved it. I was like, actress, there she is. I mean, it's always been there. Yeah. Um, does that drive, would you say that drive came from like, when you were really young, because I know you did like competitive sports. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you got into it? I was, diving? I started diving, competitive diving uh, when I was eight and I quit when I was like 14 or 15. And I was like, I qualified for the Olympics. So I would have been, I would have been, been that journey. That would have been that journey. Yeah. Speaking um, of money though, there really wasn't a lot of money in um, competitive diving at the time. A lot of people wouldn't watch it on TV. So you know, when you won the brand deals and all the sponsorships weren't, weren't like what Nike, Adidas, yeah. like, you know, whatever, Under Armour. It was one guy that I know got a McDonald's campaign. And I think it was for like $2 million. Yeah. And we were all like, we want to be like him. Like, yeah. that's the goal. And I just fell out of love with it. So You're I quit. Like, I love McDonald's. Yeah. Oh, bitch. Used to work <laughs> yeah. there. Still eat it. Had it <laughs> <Yeah>. today. <laughs> <laughs> but to answer your question, yes, I really like, I look back at like home footage of myself there. and I'm like, take my picture. Like, I think I have like middle child syndrome. Like, look at me. Yeah. And it's on top of that, Taurus Aries energy. Yeah. Like that's just, us. yes, that's yeah. us. So it's very much like take my photo. Happy birthday, I by the it. way. Oh it my was God. just your birthday. Thank you. When yeah. does this come out? Um, Next year on your birthday. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Did so. you always feel like you were? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll explain it because um, maybe it was my love for uh, for cinema. Like, okay. Um, what, I only had, I didn't have very much exposure actually, to be honest, but I had one movie that I loved and it was The Wizard of Oz. I played, it, I played it over and over and I thought everything was gorgeous. I thought the coloring, the shoes were fabulous. Mm -hmm. I wanted a yellow brick road, all of the things. We should do that for your birthday. Yeah. That Have actually, you ever done Wizard of Oz? Theme? No. But that was my, that was like my only thing I could watch and the only thing that like fed into my imagination. Like it like bled out serotonin into yeah, you? Yeah, like it was there for me. And I watched it so many times. I remember sitting in my room, completely harmless. I'm watching a movie, which is what most parents probably would love. Would love. And it, it would rewind and play again. And um, for those of you that don't know that, it was a tape. You had to rewind <laughs> had it to on rewind the VHS. It. Yeah. And so it would rewind and play again. And I would just sit and watch it over and over again. My mom came and she ejected it. And didn't say a word to me. And I'm watching her. And she opens the second story window and just throws it out. Ew. I know. And I was all. How old were you? Four. Balled your eyes out. Like before I was in school. Oh my God. No, I didn't ball my eyes out. I remember just watching her and thinking, why? I'm not doing anything wrong. <laughs> this is. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> uh, but whatever. She's this like, I did podcast. do that. Yeah. She's like, yeah. <laughs> well, it was I did a little do that. Annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but what She's the, like, it was on the thousand. The next time. thing I did. I don't know how I was so smart at this young age, but I didn't say anything mm -hmm. and I didn't make a fuss about it. But the next time someone asked me what I wanted as a gift, I said, the Wizard of Oz movie. Amazing, and amazing. I, and my mom walked in and it was playing again. I love it. <laughs> because her, She's um, like this my stepdad bitch. at the time asked me what I wanted for my birthday, I think which had come up. And I said, the Wizard of Oz movie. And he went out and got it for me. Innocent and, enough. And I, didn't scream that I had the Wizard of Oz movie. I just started playing it again. I love that. Over and over again. But I mean, I think that's kind of where my love for cinema started. And I started acting things out or uh, watching things over and over again and memorizing lines. Um, I remember in high school, I, I uh, wrote the entire screen movie out. I watched it that many times. I wrote all the lines out. Holy shit, and you know every line to Clueless too. I know. Yeah, I sat with her and I was like, 
You don't know every line. Every, every scene, line, every expression. character, every music beat. Yeah. Bam. I was literally like, is she kidding? <laughs> yeah. Like, it is a guy. <laughs> yeah. And so I would do these with movies and I did this with Scream and I would, I remember printing it out. And it's in my handwriting. Um, the name of the character, and that's a lot of writing to it's do. That's insane. That's like, like giving like, like photographic memory. Yeah. Well, and I really wanted to make movies mm -hmm. at the time, so I think that that started with me early. Um, yeah. So I knew I was gonna be something mm -hmm. in the entertainment industry. Um, you know what I think else is really funny? I think a lot of queer people, like within our broad community, they get these like street smarts built in with them. Yeah. And like relationship smarts. And, you know, just like with the Wizard of Oz tape, it's like one thing gone, I'm not going to cause a huge scene because I love it so much. Right. I'm just going to get it again. Yeah. I'm just going to get it again. Yeah. And you just found a way to get it and you did I it. Waited. And that's how you lived your life. And when I, when I was asked, I remember being in my head, like the light bulb went off. This is it. Mm -hmm. This is my chance. Right. And that's when I said it. <clears throat> but yeah, I think that, you know, and again, how amazing our intellect is that we build up these things that are, that defend us, that are protect us. Mm -hmm. um, Your brain just knows, like, don't do it right now. Yeah. And I, but I also think on, in that respect, a lot of those things should be unlearned because mm -hmm. now we're in a safe space that we don't have to hide our, you know, make ourselves smaller um, for other people because we don't have to go through that anymore. Mm -hmm. that, th that's done for us in a sense that we're in a position and the great thing about being in our position, the great thing about lots of people knowing who you are is that we are that visual, uh, something to look at that that's relatable to them and something to hear um, for them to relate to because you know, that's, that's all it was, is that I didn't, I didn't, I thought I was the only person in the world. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell Me you, too. yeah, right. Mm -hmm. For the long time, I thought something was wrong. Mm -hmm. I was like, why was I made this way? Mm -hmm. um, turns out it was the best way. Um, but, um, but I always wondered that. And, and it wasn't even when I saw your YouTube, when I first saw it, I was like, I wish I had someone like you growing up. Aww. to see because then it would have given me that extra hope mm -hmm. even though I survived all the things but like a little who knows if you know maybe I wouldn't have been strong enough to make it all this way mm -hmm. for that person who doesn't get to see someone in their life or in their community um, to see someone like you that they might be like that could be me or mm -hmm. I have those feelings and um, so I think that that's the special part you know yeah even though you were sharing you know, and then that's very difficult to do, right? To share I everything. Mean, you were sharing everything. I was living vicariously through the people online. Yeah. Like I felt so lifted up. So that was your up. community. Yeah, oh, beyond. Yeah. Like they felt seen. I felt seen. And that's one of the big parts I love about YouTube. It's just like, you can see yourself. You can not feel alone. Like a lot of the time I would have people writing me like back in the day, like literally like in, when I was in high school, like, oh my God, I feel like we're like on the phone right now, just talking. And because I was yeah. just telling a story to the camera. Yeah. And now, like, I get that feeling. And I just, like, you know, met up with them in person. And I'm like, hi, girl. You know, <laughs> like, what's up? But now I get that. Like, no, You and are it's really the best with people that recognize you, that want a photo. I mean, you go so far as, like, to tell people our location of our hotel. Hello. Oh, I've done that. <laughs> I in know. Rome. <laughs> and you've gotten in trouble for it. Like everywhere, yeah, literally. Like, well, that's okay. Just come meet me at this restaurant we're going to. It's bad, but I think that's my street smarts too. But I never do it when it's too no, vulnerable, no, no, but no, when but I not, can get away with no, it. No, it's actually very beautiful and it's very sweet. And it goes to show how big your heart is because you want people to experience. I want to hug them. You hug like, them because, yeah. you know, you want to, the feeling that they're giving out for someone to go out of their way. I mean, it's really hard to tell someone you like them. You totally. Know? We see uh, our own peers, you know, come to maybe Bootsy Bellows or something like that. I necessarily probably wouldn't go up to a table of, let's say, someone that I love. Harry Styles. No, I would. Um, <laughs> I would too. Bad example. Actually, I feel we're like not that we've way. hung with him in New York. Yeah, we have. At Boom Boom Room? Yeah. Angel. And Delilah. Angel, angel, angel. But in general is what I'm saying is that people don't normally go up to people and be like, I love you. Yes. Actually, I, I mean, we kind of do that. To be honest, well, I, I, if I see someone and they love their outfit, I'm going to tell them. Right. 
But for someone to take the actual effort and be like, you changed something in me, or I'm just, I watch all your videos. Mm -hmm. You want to like, like, I don't know if it's reward, but it's kind of an exchange. Yeah, they feel like they know you. That's something yeah. that people like online have, a, you know, a one up on against like traditional, you know, media celebrities or actresses yeah. or whatever. It's like you literally are sharing your life. You see like vlog footage. You see people like interacting with their friends. Maybe you see them out and you're like, I know her yeah. from her. Like that's her best friend. I know yeah. her. That's her sister. Like you just feel like, oh my God, I love you guys. You yeah. know, and it's like all in the approach. So I feel like if you're like cool, then it's cool. Yeah. I can go on and on with you. <laughs> <laughs> but before we go, mm -hmm. I want to do Marsha Lives with you. You down? Yeah. What's that? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't even know. <laughs> no, no, I do. Okay, here's the first one. <clears throat> it's a red flag for me if you blank. Um, so many things. Can't yeah. even think of one. Yeah. I have so many red flags. Like, what's your pet peeve? Um, if you just aren't open and honest. Accepting, maybe. Oh, yeah. But you if know. I ask you a question, I want an answer. Yeah. Like, I want an answer. Yeah. Because you're going to you get one from me. To you're going to drill. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. My biggest inspiration is blank. Ooh, right now, Sophia Loren. Oh, I love that. And you're giving that, actually, the moment you said that. Really? I don't know. I felt the energy. <laughs> and Do you hear she, that, Sophia? <laughs> yeah, she would be in this kind of, like, look. Um, okay. Blank makes me cry. Um, death. Yeah. <laughs> Dark. Yeah. Dark. It does. It's one thing that will always get me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My guilty pleasure is blank. Has been and always will be <laughs> Miss Mickey D's. Yes. <laughs> love McDonald's. I mean, you, I know you love those French fries. You once called them world renowned. They are. Oh my God. Roll the clip. <laughs> roll the clip. We've no, they're got world it. famous. World famous. You yeah. loved that one. <laughs> I do. Um, if I need to be alone, I go to mm, my makeup vanity mm, and I definitely. spend at least a good hour. That's, I call it my therapy, putting my face on, doing my hair. I just love spending time. It's self care. Yeah. I, I, I knew it was self care before everyone else. It was like trendy, but that's my time to like re like reset. So when, while you were saying that in my head, for some whatever reason, it popped in that when I used to work at this law office when I was like 16, mm -hmm. when I wanted alone time, I would be like, I'll go find the file. And I would go up to the filing room on the second floor with no air conditioning and just find the file right away and then sit with it. Yep. And just I can see it. For a moment. I can just see it. Just to be alone from everyone. And actually just like, I think I was tired from school or whatever, but that was my getaway. Didn't want to work. The filing cabinet. Yeah, <laughs> the filing room. Okay, here's another one. I mostly complain about what? Mm, the temperature, if I'm hot and sweaty. Uh, the driving. I ha oh, do, would you like a list? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> driving, bumpy, swervy, wind in the car. I have a lot of stuff, but yeah. I can deal with anything. It's just I could got to get it out. I love this game. Can you tell? Right? Okay, here's another one. Um, I'm turned on by... Confidence. Mm, definitely. Yes. Definitely. Matt like has that. confidence. Yeah, your husband has all the confidence. Pictures of blank fills my heart. Um, Big group photos of yeah. everyone I love. Yeah. When we all look really cute yeah. and we're just like looking like 10, I'm talking 10 plus. <laughs> Sometimes 30. Literally. We, but I'm like, everyone's there. Group. I would just want to frame it. That, that fills my heart. Yeah. And you frame a lot of your friends' photos. Not one wall in yeah, the house. Yeah, exactly. Bitch. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, more art. If I could do something just once without no, without risk, I would. Jump off a cliff. Just to get that feeling? Yeah. Yeah, no risk, right? No Why risk. wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you just die and come back to life, right? Yeah, but does that come from... I was going to ask you this earlier. With diving as a child, I, mean, I wouldn't leave the ledge. <laughs> I like don't how? know what was up with, I don't know. Just, I had, it's in you. It's funny. I had my eighth birthday party. I begged my mom to do a gymnastics party. I don't know why. I love Maybe I saw too. Stick It or something. Yeah. And she did it. And then one of the instructors suggested diving. And she was like, yeah, 
and we just went to diving like the next month and wow. it, I went to learn to dive and I cried the first so time. So had she just taking you maybe to a gymnast, it would have been way different. I probably would have just pursued gymnastics. Yeah. Cause I just loved it all. Yeah. Yeah. But and I would have been a lot shorter cause it stunts your growth. Yeah. Gymnastics. But a different person. Right. Yeah. But that just one road, that person was like, go here. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, I remember I had this uh, band teacher. <laughs> Um, I don't know if I like to talk a lot in class, but I was playing the trombone and I didn't really like it, but I did what I needed to do to get through school. So I um, played the trombone. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, well. Oh, well, that put a target right up. No. <laughs> um, but I remember him going, can I speak to you for a second? And I was like, sure. Wasn't I didn't get in trouble or anything. And we were on a walk and he's like, you know, I think he told me something about maybe about me talking a lot. He, walked he definitely talks a lot. Yeah, he t he walks me over to the choir room, and it was like, I think you're better suited here. And he had worked it out with the choir teacher, and he was like, I just stood in the choir. He like, traded you off. He traded me off. Wow, that's a dope teacher. Yeah, I would do the same thing. But actually, uh -uh. totally, because he's like, I see something you you're better fit. Right. Is here. Right. And it wasn't there. So maybe I manifested it. Yeah. Um, oh, that's cute, yeah, kind of. Yeah, him. I like that. And then, okay, so our last one is, and fill this blank in, blank space in, I am... Gorgeous. Yes, <laughs> I love that. Wait, that's how the beginning of our day started. It did. Yeah. I didn't know you were recording that. <laughs> yeah, sorry I'm like that. in, what, full like uh, burpee mode? I'm oh, like, yeah. yes. You were working it out. Every morning, yeah. every morning, I'm in her garage working out with my husband, uh -huh. like clockwork. You're killing it. I'm I'm trying to get that summer body. Yeah, we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Wow, I think it's so amazing. Gigi, do tell us where people can find you in your upcoming projects. Well, I'm all over social media, Gigi Gorgeous, except on Twitter, I'm the Gigi Gorgeous. Um, and I'm working on so much right now. Can't talk about much, but I'm going down another avenue with a friend that I've done before. Got it. If that's like any hint, but I mean, like it's vague, it's so vague, but like going to be so good. good. Oh, it's everything. It's going to be so good when it comes out next year. Okay. So good. Like, wait. You're going to die. Are you ever, are you going to tell me in secret? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yes. But secret from this. Cause <laughs> imagine you're like, okay, no, I'll, get, I'll, I'll die. never tell you. I'll get sued. Yeah. yeah like, mm -mm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Nope, you'll never know. We done here? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you start breaking the mics. <laughs> I need this I footage. swing from this. <laughs> yeah. One sunny drink. <laughs> I want to also mention that you have a podcast called Queerified. I had a podcast called Queerified. Oh, that's right. It's actually over. Okay, well. So I did all my episodes with the network, and now it's done. It's just solidified in time. All the episodes are still up, though. Yeah. If people want to watch people them. People can check it out. Yeah, it's all. We basically wanted to create a safe space for queer people. We had you on. Yeah. That was I, such a fabulous episode. You got episode. my feet wet and all this. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And now you're addicted, right? Now I'm addicted. It's Gigi, thank you for coming on. You're an amazing guests and I hope to see you again soon tonight even for dinner wow would you look at the right after this yeah thank you for having me Marsha 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 this was fab um this setup is everything and it's so crazy to be back with you in the club yeah yeah let's celebrate yeah like we've never left bottle service please <laughs> Marsha 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 is out this podcast is brought to you by Vocal Podcast Network executive producers are Michaela Simon and Marsha Molinari Produced by Yonta Taiwo and Morgan McDonald. Shooting and editing by Morgan McDonald. Music by Aaron Reese. Artwork by Dominic Demetz and hosted by Marsha Molinari. Remember to follow at Marsha Molinari and at Vocal Podcasts Everywhere. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. <laughs>